and I'd like to introduce some of the kids that are going to be helping us with the program today. This is my friend Evan. Hi. This is Janai. Hi. This is Veronica. Hi. This is Keo. Hi. This is my friend Zach. Hi. Next to Zach is James. This is my daughter Zane. Hi. And next to Zane is Isaiah. Hi. Hi, my name is Jack DeAndre. I'm the tennis director at the McKenna Tennis Club. Welcome to my club. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to coach your child in tennis without brain damaging them or you. And to get started with that, I wanted to show you some of the equipment that I'm going to be using today. It's equipment that everybody can procure at any sports store. It's not very expensive, and it's gonna make your tennis with your child a lot of fun. I'd like to talk about some of the equipment that I'm gonna be using today. First of all, you're gonna need a basket of balls. It doesn't have to be a hopper like this one, although that makes picking up the balls easier. Just any uh, milk crate or anything that you can hold a few balls in. Um, I'm also gonna be working with sponge balls today. This is a sponge ball. It's a really great learning tool. We're gonna to be working with low compression balls and Basically right now, I'd like to talk a little bit about rackets. There's all kinds of different sizes and you might go into a store and you might be confused. First of all, the smaller the child, the littler the racket needs to be. So Evan, come on out here. This would be a perfect size for Evan. Now here's a test I like to do. Hold on with your right hand and hit, your, hit my hands back and forth as fast as you can. Now hit my hands this way, like this, up and down. Great, that's a good racket for you. Go back in line. Janai, come on over here. That's a great racket for you. Hit my hands back and forth. Oh, good. And go this way. Go this way. Great. Keo, this might be a good size for you. Hit my hands back and forth. And now up and down. Great. Get out of here. Veronica, come on over here. Hit my hands back and forth. And now up and down. Now this one might be a little bit too big for you because that was a little bit slow, but that's okay. Go over there. Zach, I'm gonna have you try this racket. Let's see if it fits you. Tap me back and forth. One-handed, please. And then up and down. Up and down like this. Faster, faster. Great. Good job. Who's next, James? Let's see if this racket works for you. Hit me back. Oh, good. And up and down. Obviously, the, 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 the easier it is to maneuver the racket, the better the racket is for that kid. And Zane, come on out here. This is still a junior racket. It's one inch shorter than an adult racket. Great. And Isaiah? He's our big boy. This is an adult racket. Let's see how this works. Back and forth, and up and down. Good. There you go. So that's some of the equipment that you'll need, and uh, let's get to playing some tennis. I wanna talk a little bit about working with the little ones. Initially, there's three areas you work on. Ball only, racket only, then you put the ball and the racket together. Right now, you guys, let's play catch. Spread your legs nice and wide, and we're gonna roll the ball back and forth. So this is a great drill for ball only. I mean, you can just roll it. So we're rolling it back and forth. It's a great eye-hand drill. Keep your legs wide. Keep your legs wide. There you go. And roll it again. Great. All right. Now let's try a drill with the ball and the racket together. We're now going to do a drill 
that puts the ball and the racket together. They might not be ready to rally, but we can certainly play hockey back and forth. So Evan's gonna stop it and then send it back to me. Then I stop it and send it to Evan. Go ahead, girls. And again, this is an eye hand drill and it gets you using the ball and the racket together. How are you guys doing? <laughs> and that's that. I'm with Evan, Janai, and Veronica again, and we're going to practice some eye hand skills using a racket that we turned into a net. Basically, that's a tennis, a junior tennis racket. We added a laundry bag, and away we go. Evan, you ready? Catch that ball. Ready? Jenai, catch that ball. Ready, Veronica? Away you go. By the way, there's no, go ahead, Evan. Don't mention grips. Don't mention feet. Grab that ball. Good job. Don't mention hands. Don't mention anything. Everything is happening naturally. Good catch by Evan. Go ahead, Jenai. Now you can get real creative with this. You can throw them super high. You can throw them super low. Nice try. Or even lower. Nice catch. Or a medium one for Evan. There you go. Hey, you guys, put the balls back in the basket. Thank you. One, two, three, four. I got four. An excellent drill for hand eye. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I'm working with Zane, Isaiah, James, Zach, and Keo, and we're going to start getting into some more involved drills. I'd like to say one thing, though. All the drills that we're going to do and have done, the parent has to be involved and connected. The child has to be involved and connected. By that I mean you're doing it with your child and the balls are connected. You're connected to your child. I'm not going to do a lot of drills today where I feed the ball and the child hits the ball and then I feed again. I feel that's not tennis and you're not connected. So the first drill is going to be a self feed where they're going to tap the ball eye high and just keep it going. Show me that, kids. Now, once they can do that, without moving around too much, we're going to move on to the next step. You guys hold the balls. Now, you four stand on the line. Keo, you're going to demonstrate with me. Give me, let me have your ball. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and then tap it to Keo. Then Keo is going to go one, two, three, and tap it back to me. I'm going to do one, two. You can see that the ball is connected. You have to be considerate and cooperative with your partner. So it's eye high, a soft tap, and then you tap it to your partner. The key here is to make sure that the ball bounces between you and your practice partner or your child. Zach and James, show me that right there. Isaiah and Zane, come on over here. Keo, you and I are going to come on over here. Let's everybody do that. I'm sure you've noticed that we're not using the net right now. Go ahead and do this drill without the net for a few minutes. Once you can see that there's good control, you can add the net. And that's what we're going to do 
in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so this is just an eye, hand, judgment, feel, and touch drill. We call it a JFT drill. You have to become friends with the ball. You have to become friends with the way the ball bounces. And you have to become friends with your racket. Hey everybody, I'm still with Zach, Isaiah, Zane, Keo, and James, and we're still playing three bounce mini tennis. But now, we're doing it over the net. The key to three bounce mini is the cooperative aspect. If I make a mistake and move back, don't hit it from back here. You have to control it, bring it back, and send it to your partner. Let's play, kids. Again, no instruction on grip, hands, or feet. Let them do what they want to do. There's a joke in my company. Turn sideways, watch the ball, bend your knees, $30 please. That's your basic lesson. You do not need to say those things to your child. In fact, they could be very limiting to their performance. Save it, save it. Good girl. If they make a mistake into the net, you can save it with your racket. Don't use your hands. Good shot. Zane, move back to the service line. Everybody else, move off to the sides. Go ahead, Zane. So we're going to play three bounce mini tennis from the service line. This is where it gets tricky for the parents. You've got to be able to hit a ball that's very dead for them. It can't be too lively a ball. You've got to be able to stop it, bounce it a couple of times, and send it back without any life to the ball. If the ball is too lively, they may not be able to control it. So it's still three bounces. That's the judgment and touch part. And then they tap it to you. One, two, three, and send it back. Now if they're doing well, the next step is to just stop it once. Here you go, Zane. Stop it once and send it back to me. Stop it once and send it back. So you're already playing tennis from the service line within a very short time. Stop it once and send it back. Stop it once. That's great. Do you think it will work with you and your child? Hey everybody, we're going to start hitting the ball directly now and I'm going to be practicing with Keo and we're going to be playing some three bounce rallying. She's going to let the ball bounce a few times and then tap it nice and high back to me. The toughest part right now is for myself, the coach or the parent, to be able to hit a ball that's nice and dead. It's easy to hit a tennis ball hard, but it's difficult to hit it so that it's nice and soft. The beauty of this drill is, is that Keo decides when to hit the ball. I'm giving her lots of options of bounces. She figures out at what height and when she wants to hit it. Everybody, let's play. Keo, you hit one. 
Then Zane's gonna hit one. Zane, kick that ball out of the way when you, after you hit, please. Ready, Zach? In the net, five push-ups, baby. <laughs> Isaiah, show me something good. There you go. So again, they decide when to hit the ball after a few bounces. Don't tell them when they should hit it. Let them judge the bounces. Welcome back to the McKenna Tennis Club. I'm Jack, I'm playing with James, and we're gonna rally now from the baseline. I'm gonna be involved, and our balls are gonna be connected to each other. I'm gonna add the follow through. Up until now, we haven't spoken about a follow through at all. I'm gonna have James finish with his racket over his shoulder. So here we go, James. Again, I'm hitting a ball that I classify as dead. I'm hitting the ball up into the air and it's bouncing two or three times before it gets to James. I do that for a couple of different reasons. When you play with an adult ball, a regular tennis ball, it bounces very high. By giving James a few bounces, it allows him to choose when the ball is lower. As the coach, I have to make sure that my racket face is open about 45 degrees and I can't hit it very hard. But I want James to follow through each time. So the beauty of this is, in a very short time, you'll be able to rally back and forth with your child and that's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna get all the kids involved now. Everybody get behind James, let's play. Keo, Zach. Let it bounce a few times. Here goes Zach. Let it bounce a few times. Show me your follow through. Good. Isaiah, do me proud, baby. Good swing. Now as the coach, be prepared to move a little bit. They may not hit everything right to you. You've got to make sure you can move and keep sending back that dead ball. Great follow through James. By the way, no negativity please. Just positive reinforcement. You want to make tennis fun. You want to make tennis fun with you, the parent. Don't bring up anything else. Just keep it real positive and have fun playing tennis with your child. Thanks you guys, that was great. Hi everybody, welcome back to the McKenna Tennis Club. I'm playing with Zane, and we're gonna be using some adapted balls. We're first gonna be using a sponge ball. In uh, lots of junior programs they call it a speed ball because you can swing very fast and the ball stays in. I like it because it slows everything down and it makes rallying easier. Then we're gonna move back to the baseline and use a low compression ball. Again, for kids, this ball bounces lower, it stays in their strike zone longer. So Zane, let's rally with the sponger. The cool thing about these balls, as the coach, you can now swing pretty hard. And that's fun. Swinging at the ball a little bit faster is definitely a fun thing. Hit it up in the air. Give your child lots of time to set up for the ball. And again, I've been speaking a lot to the camera, but I haven't said a lot to the kids when we've been playing. Let them hit, there's no right or wrong. It goes over the net, great. It doesn't go over the net, that's great too. All right, Zane, let's move back to the baseline and we're gonna use the low compression ball.
And again, this ball, low compression is another term for dead. You can take a big swing at it, and it stays in the court. This could be one bounce or two bounces. There's no rule. As you probably realize, I'm a big fan of two bounces because it gives them so much time to make their decisions. So I definitely recommend sponge balls and low compression balls. Look at this rally that we're having. Last one, Zane. Good job. Thank you. Hey, everybody. We're continuing to work on rallying with your child. You may have noticed this yellow band that I added above the net. I'm going to ask them to rally over this yellow band. Arc in tennis, you may or may not know, is a hugely important concept. So we're going to rally over the yellow band, still with the low compression balls. So they're going to practice following through and aiming high. Ready, Zane? Anytime you can have a visual image like this yellow band, anytime something saves you from speaking, it's a very important device. So they know they have to aim over the yellow. I don't have to say, aim higher, do this, do that. They can see how they're doing. So I'm a big fan of anything that's visual. Less speaking, more hitting. Nice swing, Keo. Let's go one bounce. Everybody, one bounce. Nice one, Keo. Hey, everybody. We're going to start with some serving. How to teach your child how to serve is a very interesting thing. I talked about not using a lot of balls when you coach. For serving, it's a great idea to have a lot of balls because you need to hit a lot of them. Now you guys, let me put this basket right here. I, we're gonna be serving with Evan, Janai, and Veronica. The first thing they're gonna do is practice throwing the ball. The most important part of the serve is using your wrist. So right now, they're gonna show you, move in, how to use their wrist. Ooh, that's nice. Can you put the balls much more closer? <laughs> Can you put the balls much more closer? Lazy bones. You keep repeating that, do I? So when you're done, 
The head of the racket should be down. Ow. Nice catch. Nice, Evan. Okay. The head of the racket should be down, and the butt cap should be up. This is a wrist isolation drill. The ball hit my head. The, the ball hit my head. You better do it. When it goes down, it keeps hitting my wrist. Perfect, perfect. Two more each. One more each. One more for Janai. Yay. All right, hold it. That's my last one. Hold it. Now, the next drill, you guys don't hold any balls yet. You have to throw the first one, then toss the ball in the air, and hit the second one. Don't hold any balls yet. Can I'm going to do it a couple more times. Can I get a finish? Here's the key. This throw has to look like this hit. Show me. Can I do this? Not yet. Throw the first one, and then hit the second one. Good. Oh, Janai, that was great. Here you go. Ah, my body. Throw the first one, good. And hit the second one. Whoa. Nice. Whoa. Veronica, come here. I'm going to do this with you. So here's what I want on the first one. You throw it, and then the second one, you hit it with the same movement. Hold it. Stay here. So throw the first one and hit the second one. Last two each. I did it wrong. Did you? It looked pretty good. Hey, nice Evan. Janet, you do the last two. Veronica, you do two more. Evan, you're done. That's great. Hey, my ball ran away. Nice. Hey. So there's the start to your serving. Hey, gang, everybody. Welcome back to the McKenna Tennis Club. I'm Jack. I'm working now with Zane, Isaiah, James, Zach, and Keo, we're gonna continue with serving. Now these guys all have pretty good serves, but we're gonna go through a progression for some beginning servers. Here's the first drill. There's a couple of nuances. They're gonna serve from where they're standing, just using their wrist. This movement being the most important part of the serve. Then they have to finish in their armpit. So watch me serve a couple. They're gonna finish in their armpit and take the ball with their dominant hand. So they're working on the wrist snap and the follow through at the same time. Go ahead, you guys. Finishing in their armpit is a trick to make them snap their wrist. They have to use their wrist to get the racket into the armpit. But what I say is, make those rackets smelly. By taking the ball with their dominant hand, wrong hand, I know that their racket followed through. I always start serving close to the net. Success is a good thing. If the majority of balls are going over the net, let's move back from the service line. I don't teach grips yet. Their feet can be any way they want. Just get that wrist snap over their head.
Now, if you're just doing this with one child, there's no safety factor. With four or five kids, make sure they're spread out. What's the rule about bleeding, everybody? Bleed quietly. Bleed quietly. That's my most important rule. No Wait a minute. Last serve each. Everybody get one ball. Hold your fire. Ready? Go. Okay. Good job. Thanks, everybody. Give me a five. All right. Hey everybody, we're back at the McKenna Tennis Club. We're still working on the serve and how to teach your child how to serve. Remember, the wrist is the most important part of the serve. To make sure that your wrist is loose, everybody should hold the ball in thumb and forefinger and rest the racket on the other three. Now the drill we're gonna do now is to start with the racket in your left hand and to finish with the racket in your armpit. They're then going to take the next ball with their right hand. So the drill is going to look like this. Left hand start, slow, wrist, armpit finish. Go ahead kids. Armpit finish. Good armpit finish. Isaiah, you only forgot one thing there. Nice serve, Keo. Now I do like to have them start to do one thing. I still haven't taught a grip. They might have a western grip, they might have a continental grip. Any grip is okay as long as they finish knuckles out in their armpit. It shouldn't be palm out. So you can start to be a little bit fussy with knuckles out on the surf. Watch me. That was knuckles out and that's the right way to do it. Keep going guys. Last three serves each. Nice Keo. Like mm -mm, the other way. Mm. Knuckles out. Okay, hold it. Keo's going to serve the last ball. If it goes in, she's the champion. Oh, almost. Thanks, everybody. Hey everybody, it's Zach, Zane, James, Isaiah, and Keo again. We're going to go ahead and do a four ball shuttle run. We've got our rackets at the baseline. There's four balls up by the net. We're going to run up, grab one ball, bring it back, place it on the racket, and then go get another one. It is a race, so we have to do it as fast as we can. Tennis is a series of short runs bending, jumping, moving, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Who's the fastest here? I think it's me. Okay, ready, set, go! Oh, you cheated. And you adults too. Let's run a bit. Hey, somebody dropped the ball. Hey! Oh man, I'm second. <laughs> Keo and Zane were tied for first. Well, well, I hope you enjoyed your time at the McKenna Tennis Club. We went through some mini tennis, some judgment feel and touch drills, some rallying drills, some serving drills, and now a running drill. Thanks everybody, hope to see you again soon. See you on the courts, bye.